Good morning. Good morning. Sorry my wife couldn't be with me today. She had to stay in Tulsa. But in honor of her, you know, she's just a great woman of God. and I've, uh, She's followed me all around the world and not complained. She's beautiful. She's smart. So in honor of her, I'll tell you a joke. <clears throat> One time there was this uh, helicopter that had a rope you know, extended, and on this rope were ten people hanging, dangling. But one of them had to let go. There were nine men and one woman. So when they realized one was going to have to let go, the woman spoke up and said, well, I know what it is to sacrifice. I know what it is. I had to raise children. I had to, you know, take care of my husband. You know, I know what that kind of a attitude is. And so she kept talking. Well, it, you know, the men got so carried away, they clapped. <laughs> Some of y'all, that'll hit you when you get home, but anyway, uh, she is a blessing, and uh, it's a blessing to be with you today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. We'll get right into the Word of God. I'll read a text, and then, then we'll pray, and I'll share with you what I want to, uh, what we want to share with you this morning. I believe it'll be an encouragement to you. How many of you know God's a God of encouragement? Amen. who helps us in all our troubles, and then we can take that and help others. That's the name of the game, isn't it? Don't keep it to yourself. How many of you, been, how many, how many of you can testify that the Lord has helped you? Amen. Well, if He has, you've got something to share, don't you? Amen. Always. Well, praise the Lord. <clears throat> so in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. I want to read just one verse. We're going to be all over the, the, the Word of God, particularly the Psalms this morning. But verse 17, Paul uh, writing this to Timothy, who at this time was a pastor of the church at Ephesus. He had many different things that he had to deal with in different seasons during his ministry there. <clears throat> but one word that he had from Paul to, to pass on to others was command or exhort those who are rich in this present age <clears throat> not to be haughty nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Amen. And I want you to uh, just maybe underline or <clears throat> for our emphasis where it says that we're not to trust and we can receive it from ourselves. You know, you may not consider yourself rich, but you know, compared to the rest of the world, Amen. The most poverty-stricken person in America is rich compared to most of the world. Amen. If you don't realize that, you ain't been out much. <laughs> so, let's just, you know, don't get hung up on the rich part. I want to get to this part. He told them to trust, in the, not in uncertain riches, but in the living God. How many of you know it would be right to say it this way? Don't trust in uncertain riches, but trust in God. Amen. How many of you believe, you agree with me that that's what he's talking about? That's what I want to share with you this morning, what it means to trust in God. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be with your people this morning, your sheep. And Father, we've all come, Lord, to feed and feast upon your word. And we always know that you're so faithful to feed us. And we look to you, Lord Jesus, as the great shepherd of the sheep that has provided for us the Holy Spirit to live inside of us so that now as we follow you, that we hear the voice of the shepherd, the good shepherd, and a stranger we don't follow. And we thank you, Father, for the Spirit of God who is the Spirit of truth. And we ask that he do that today. Lead us and guide us into the truth of your word. I ask for utterance in Jesus' name. And we always pray, Lord, that you will have your way, that you'll be glorified. Your will be done in Jesus' name. And everybody agreed, said... Amen. Amen. I'm going to do something just a matter of illustration. Uh, do not be alarmed. I am not going to receive an offering. I promise you that. But if you have a dollar, a ten dollar, five dollar bill, something, or even a coin, maybe you'd like to get it out and hold it just for a second while I give you a little bit of introduction of what I want to share with you about. Uh, Brother Ed uh, told you that we spent... Um, actually 17 years on the mission field. And what I'm going to share with you, uh, and kind of this is where I got this message, it would be hard to really completely understand, and maybe some of you have lived overseas, you wouldn't quite understand it unless you've lived there for a while. It wouldn't sink in. Because you almost have to live there outside of America to understand what I'm sharing about cycles and things. But anyway, um, 
uh, I don't know what happened as far as historically, but some, someone told me, I believe it was uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, convinced uh, <clears throat> certain uh, countries, maybe at the UN, I'm not sure where it happened, but to change the, the standard of the world currency from gold to dollars. So basically, now it's kind of diversified a little bit, but it's still true. The world economy is based on the dollar. And so, you know, that might have been good, that might have been bad, probably should have just stayed with gold, but, you know, that's history. But uh, what, I, what we begin to realize as we lived overseas, lived in Sweden three years, and lived in France for 14, uh, things were just naturally more expensive, but nevertheless, you know, God led us there, and how do you know where God guides, He provides. Yeah. Prosperity is relative. If you're in the will of God, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, in a, uh, in, in a hut in Africa or Indonesia or in China or living in Europe where everything costs two or three times as much. You know, if you're, if you're following God, He's going to meet your need. I mean, you know, our prosperity is a following prosperity. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Well, what does sheep do? They follow the shepherd, right? So we followed the great shepherd over there, and he was so faithful during those 18 years, raised four, uh, you know, a family of five, uh, uh, on, on, uh, you know, uh, just by faith, because we couldn't go work, and, you know, God supplied our needs. But what we began to realize was this cycles of ebbs and flow, because the world economy was based on the dollar. And uh, somewhere around... Uh, 2000, I guess, around there somewhere. The uh, you, you remember this? The uh, French currency, the uh, German currency, the Italian currency, and many other currencies of Europe merged to the euro. Have you ever seen a euro? You know, and every, you know everybody was lauding that, and it's you know it's probably a good thing, probably a bad thing, you know. But we understand a lot of that is a precursor to the antichrist system that's going to happen, and so we were all kind of interested in that. Well, at first it was kind of good because when the euro first came out, uh, the, it would took ninety cents to equal one euro. That's good for us. See, you realize since everything's based on the dollar, if the dollar's strong, when you transfer it into that currency where you live, it's a good thing. But it don't always stay the same level. And this is what we begin to find out because not after that, the dollar began to slide and it went from 90 cents to a euro to a dollar 40 per euro. Now that may not sound like much to you, but if your dollar, your, your, your uh, income is the same in dollars, buddy, it makes a lot of difference when you've got to change that and live there. In other words, my rent went from about $1,100 to $1,200 to $2,600 a month. And, and, my, and, and I was still getting the same support. Matter of fact, it could raise a little bit, and it was still, and not only that, your gas... Eight dollars a gallon. You're, you know, it's a lot of things. And buddy, I tell you what, I was beginning to sweat as it were great drops of blood. <laughs> and it was just over stress. But you know, I, I begin to look at the dollar. And on the back, there's an inscription. I'm so glad America's currency has in God we trust. Hallelujah. You know, I guess they must have figured that out. Don't trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us liberally. Now hold on to that because we're going to be back on that in just a minute. But anyway, as I, I got a message out of that. When I was looking at that and going through that season of the, the dollar going crazy, I said, bless God, God don't change. And the Bible tells you, you know, riches are uncertain. Economies of the world are uncertain. This economy, as far as we know, is uncertain. You know, you hear it on the news. Well, it doesn't matter when you're trusting in God. And that's very important for the saints of God to take the Word of God and live off the Word of God so that it doesn't matter what goes in this world. You're still trusting in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. You know, I'm glad I'm not on a natural currency system. We're on a Bible system. We're on a Philippians 4.19 system. We're on a new covenant system. We're on a tithing system. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. 
Can I have a hallelujah in the house of God today? Yeah. Amen. And I tell you, this is the prime time for the church to begin to feed again upon those things. Now, that message, you know, I received many years ago. But, you know, you know, some things like that, when they're truths that were given to you, you know, they're still good. As a matter of fact, when you go visit them again, there's honey in it. Amen. Ooh, that's good. You remember when Samson killed the lion? He came back and there was honey in the lion. I read somewhere, when you remember what God has done, when you remember the word that He's spoken to you, then faith bees come around and start making honey again. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And so this has been stirred up in me again just, to, just, just not too long ago to go back and make sure I know what it means to trust in God. It's time to trust in God, church, Amen. in all areas of life. Now, before we get into uh, this in more detail, let me define trust as best as I can. Because uh, in many ways... Trust and faith are the same. But in other ways, trust is in some ways bigger. Now that may say, well, you mean bigger than faith? No, it still encompasses faith. But you know, faith is very direct. Faith is very personal for you and your... But you know, I couldn't use my faith to change the currency in Europe. Faith don't work on that. My faith cannot control the currency of a country. Are you kidding me? It's bigger than I am, but it's not bigger than God. And my t So what you do is you learn to trust in God even over things that you can't control. Okay. Yeah. That means things may, have, things may not even be going like you want it to right now. How many of you ever experienced that in life? How many of you know there are seasons, there are ebbs and flows? But when you trust in God, hallelujah, it's all going to be all right. It's all just going to work out. Amen. And there are things that you can't control. You know, we would have liked them. Some people maybe have liked to have different outcome, you know, of the election or whatever. But you know, whether it's the Democrats or Republicans, you're not supposed to have faith in them anyway. It's faith in God. I think by, I'm starting to call them the Sadducees and the Pharisees. I think that's what they both are. <laughs> at me at that way. You know, one of them is really legalistic and one of them is really liberal. So anyway, thank God my trust is in God. Amen. But we pray for them. Do you know how many of you realize the election and things didn't change that much because the issues that America is dealing with are spiritual issues and you cannot legislate spirituality. Amen. It can help or it can hinder, but I tell you what, the secret is God. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's not lose focus, church. And, you know, and the things may change economically. Things may try to change. But I tell you what, we're not trusting in uncertainty. And I'm not prophesying doom. I'm just saying it doesn't matter. We're trusting in the living God. Say it out loud. I trust in the living God. And He gives me richly all things to enjoy. Now, so do you understand? Trust, somebody said, is come, uh, faith comes from the, is trusting in the Word of God. Trust is, is in the character of God. You know, His character never changes. Huh? So when you can't always see everything, and there's not anything necessarily specific, or there are things that you don't understand, or things that are beyond your control, your trust in God stays the same because you're trusting in His character. Are you, are, you, are you with me so far? You shake your heads or something? You saw you followed me. So let's talk a little bit about trusting in God. What I'd like for you to do, if you have some notes or you're going to take notes, I encourage you to write some things down. I'm going to go through a, a checklist of how do you know if you're trusting in God. If the Bible tells us to trust in God, we need to make sure that we are. Just like faith, you know, we make sure that you're not just hoping. How I many know faith is? Hope is future. Yep. So you got to get down into the brass tacks and make sure faith believes you receive when you pray, right? And so there are certain elements that we go through and we make sure that we're in faith and not in hope or not in doubt or not in fear. Well, you, we're going to do the same thing as far as trust is concerned. And, and, and I, I encourage you to just take a few notes because if you're like me, if my wife gives me a list to go to the grocery store, which she does, you know, I used to not have to do that so much until cell phones came out. 
<laughs> and she's like a radar. She knows when I'm going by a grocery store. Ding, ling, ling, ling. Oh, yeah, by, especially in France. It was that way all the time. So I'd have to, if there were, this is just me, if there were over four things, I had to write them down. I don't know what it was. That fifth one was easy to get lost. <laughs> Then I'd come home and I wouldn't have the fifth thing. So we're going to give you six things, so you better write them down. And they're all important. They're all biblical. Uh, there's many, many scriptures on trusting in God, especially in the Psalms. And we'll just kind of categorize them so that you will have a checklist to make sure that you know that you are trusting in God. First go to Proverbs chapter 3. Some of these scriptures will be familiar. Some of them may be uh, not so familiar. But I believe they'll all speak to us this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3, a verse that uh, is very familiar to us, and we want to spend a few moments on this one. But here we'll, we'll get our first uh, point, if you will, checklist, first point on your checklist to make sure that we know, that you know, that I know, that we're trusting in God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall, glory to God, He shall direct your paths. Or one translation says, make straight paths for your feet. Aren't you glad He makes a straight path? But let's talk about this verse because we are going to find our first point. But, but notice something. If, you're, if you have, a, I think, the King James and the New King James and possibly other translations follow suit in this. When you see it, when it says, trust in the Lord, see the word Lord there? Let me ask you a question. Is it capitalized in your Bible? There is a reason for that. It's in, of course, we're, ta we're talking about the Old Testament, and this is in the Hebrew. But anytime you see the word Lord capitalized in the Old Testament, it's for a reason. Uh, it's actually the, one of His names. Now, the Bible says those that know the name of the Lord will trust in Him. See, if you, you don't really know who you're trusting, it's going to be hard to trust Him. But those that know His name, well, what's so significant about the word Lord? Well, it's capitalized, I think it's found over 4,000 times in the Old Testament. It's the number one name of God. Now, God has other names. You know, God, Lord God Almighty, El Shaddai, and all these things. But this word Lord was, was first revealed to Moses at the burning bush. You remember the story at the burning bush? You know, there was this bush burning, and Moses turned aside to see and wonder why it wasn't burning. And as he turned aside, the Lord began to speak to him. You know, I think sometimes the Lord does that. He sees if we're going to seek him. If we draw near to him, he draws near to us. Amen. So sometimes he just puts things like that in, 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 and it caught Moses' attention. And so as he drew near, God began to speak to him. And you know, we won't go through the whole story. But you know, as he gave uh, uh, Moses the commission to go uh, set the, uh, the, the children of Israel free, uh, Moses had a question. He says, I got a question. When I go there and tell them that, uh, you know, this burning bush sent me, <laughs> you know, who am I going to tell them? What am I going to say? And he said, tell them I am sent you. This is my name now forever. Whew. That's the word Lord. I am. <laughs> Everybody say I am. Or Jehovah. And of course he began to, re and it means the self-existent one who reveals himself. And he began to reveal himself in covenant ways using that name Lord throughout the Old Testament. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, amen. Jehovah our righteousness, Jehovah the Lord our shepherd. All those are revelations of the great I am. Now listen, it's very important for us to realize that because he is the God who was and is and is to come. But sometimes we're so concerned about the, what he was and what he's, what he's going to be that we forget he's in the now. He is the I am. And that's what, that's what, that's what connects your faith. How many you know faith is now? Trust is now. Yes, it applies to the future. But right now, I know that if I'm trusting in the Lord, I'm trusting in the great I am. Woo, hallelujah. So we're to trust in the Lord. Everybody say Lord. Lord. Now point number one, you trust in the Lord with your heart. 
So that's how you need to, you need to, we're making checklists. How to know if I'm trusting God? Well, you trust in the Lord with your heart and lean not to your head. That means that sometimes your head's going to tell you one thing and your heart's going to tell you something else. Is that right? There can be an opposite. And that's, you know, you find out that's true. Anybody that walks by faith, there's going to be times that what it looks like is not at all what you believe. So what does the Bible say to do? To trust in the Lord with your heart. It's very important to understand where our heart or our spirit man is. Not our heads. I think we practice this in reverse sometimes. We trust in the Lord with our heads and lean not to our hearts. <laughs> That's not what it says to do, is it? We trust in the Lord with our heart, and we lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways we just acknowledge Him. And then He'll do the rest. I, I tell you, that means He'll make straight paths. He'll tell you what you need to know. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you direction. He'll give you favor. What it is, whatever you need from the great I Am, if we will follow the directions on trusting in God, then we'll, then, then we'll, 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 we'll benefit from it. But you've got to make sure you're trusting in the Lord with your heart. You've you got to let the peace of God rule your heart. Right. Amen. With the heart, man believes. Not with the head. So, you know, make sure that in every situation that you're, 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 you're listening to your heart in situations. And you're trusting God with your heart. See, head faith is one thing. Heart faith is another thing. Head faith will fold like a clay pigeon being hit by a shotgun when circumstances come. But heart faith is not moved. <laughs> because it's going by what you can't see. It sees something else. It sees greater realities. So everybody say, I'm trusting the Lord with my heart. So that's one. Number two, let's go to Psalm chapter 5. Now, probably all the rest of the, the, the scriptures we're going to look at are in the Psalms. But the Psalms are filled with statements about trusting in God. You want something that will just feed you and bless you, get you a strong concordance and go look at all the scriptures about trusting and then just underline them and just feed on them right now. It'll bless you. I just kind of put them in categories so we could go over a few of them and kind of make a checklist to make sure that you and I know that we're trusting in God. What was number one? Trust in God with what? With your heart. Number two, Psalm chapter 5. We're going to read a verse here. Praise the Lord. How many of you got your hallelujah clothes on today? Hallelujah. Two of you do. Praise the Lord. Psalm 5 says something about trusting in God. And this is we're going to find point number two. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. So number two, trusting people rejoice. <laughs> well, that right there, you know, you, you know you, as we go over these, you might have to make a little adjustments. Don't use it to condemn yourself, but use it to practice. How many of you know we're to be doers of the Word? So if you'll start practicing rejoicing, you'll be able to trust Him more. For all those that trust in Him rejoice. Not half of them. All of them. So, you know, that's a real symptom. When you're rejoicing, that's a, that's a good sign that you're walking in faith and that your heart's fixed towards God. If you're not rejoicing, the opposite of rejoicing can be complaining. <coughs> that's really easy to fall into, isn't it? Moving right along. <laughs> but, you know, how many of you know the New Testament tells us rejoice in the Lord always? Now, we're rejoicing in the Lord, aren't we? We're not rejoicing in ourselves. We're not rejoicing in the circumstances. We're not rejoicing about what somebody did or didn't do. We're not rejoicing about what did happen or didn't happen. We're rejoicing in the Lord. Let all those rejoice who trust in you. Now why? Now he's going to give us a little bit more insight. Let them ever shout for joy because he defends you. Aren't you glad you have a defender? Let's keep reading. Here's some more of that. Just, you know, feed upon this. Let all those who love your name, see there's that name, you love the name, we trust the name, be joyful in you, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. Glory to God. I'm so glad I got the favor of God. Amen. It was so important today to know that this is why you rejoice is because you have favor with God.
You know, there's just a message about speaking favor and claiming favor every day. And that that favor would become like a shield. I remember when we were in France... You know, we were trying to get a building and, you know, we'd never, I'd never done anything like that. Hadn't done too much of it in America. But then, you know, dealing with it in another country, in another language, in another laws, and, and they weren't really kind towards evangelicals trying to find church buildings. And I'd heard all kinds of horror stories. But you know, the Lord was directing us that way and, and money was coming in and we knew we were going to make that step. So we finally found a place where we, you know, could lease in this big, nice building. And, and uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, I thought everybody would be happy. Some people weren't too happy. You know, one day I got a call and saying that, the, you know, they were going to have an inspection. I opened the door that morning in the church. There were two police officers, the mayor, two fire chiefs, <laughs> all these dignitaries standing at the front door, and they didn't look too happy. They wanted to see our building. And you know, I'm sure they were coming there trying to find reasons to do something not so good. But you know, I tell you what, you know, I, I, I just begin to, even the night before when I realized was what was going to happen, I, I fought off the, the depression and begin to rejoice and thank God I had favor and claim favor. Now you can't just do stupid things and expect God to, you know, you know, but if your heart's right, then God gives you favor. Amen. And so, you know, after about 20 minutes, they just started smiling and laughing and was all nice to me and gave me a few recommendations of things I had to do. I didn't even have all my paperwork with me there because I didn't know what they needed. And I guess they just had mercy on me and said, just, just fax it to us tomorrow. I mean, it just changed. What was that? He surrounds you with favor like a shield. Amen. Woo! Just, just shortly after that, I had a minister come and he was preaching in our church and he looked at me and he just started laughing in the Holy Ghost. And I didn't know what he was laughing about. He's looking at me. I didn't, I didn't think I did anything. <laughs> and then he said, he said, the reason why I was laughing, I was looking at you and I saw stamped on your forehead, favor. Amen. That's that shield. Hallelujah. It's there. You know, we need that living in this world. Well, God does influence situations and circumstances by angels and by the Holy Ghost and by wisdom on your behalf if you will trust Him. Amen. And He does it by favor. God gave people favor, Daniel favor, Joseph favor. Hallelujah. And they began to prosper and be blessed even when they were living in another country. And I found that out to be true. Somebody said, we're living in a fog. Yes, favor of God. <laughs> How many of you are living in a fog? <laughs> Amen. So, everybody, you know, if you're taking notes again, this was number two. Trusting people rejoice. Number three, uh, <clears throat> Psalm 62. We're, just gonna, we're not going to spend a lot of time on some of these. You know, if there's a... Something we need to share, we'll get to it. But otherwise, we're just making a checklist. Trust with your heart. Trusting people rejoice. Number three is found in Psalm 62. We'll read verse 5 and verse 8 through verse 8 so we can get the context. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Now notice verse 8. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. So number three, we trust in Him at all times. Now, 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 now there's two ways to look at that. Times meaning, you know, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is, right? It doesn't matter whether it's Monday morning at work, or whether you've got a bad report, or whether you've got a good report. If you're going to trust in Him at all times, how many of you know all times is all times? Well, is now an all time? Huh? Check yourself. Are you trusting in God now? 
because he said trust in him at all times. I also believe it means trust in him through all your seasons of life. There are times and seasons. You know, time is like chronos, but there's also kurios, which is seasons. We go through seasons of life. Sometimes, you know, we go through, you know, my, my wife and I are fixing to enter another season. We've had three girls, two of them are married, fixing to marry the other one off, and we're like we started, except a lot has changed. <laughs> but you know, I'm not, it's fun. It's wonderful. You know why? Because we're trusting in God. Amen. You know, you people that are single sometimes get all bent out of shape, you know, and, and discouraged about their singleness. You know, just trust in God during your season. Amen. He's got your name, address, telephone number, email, Facebook. He knows all of that. And you, when you know he's got your Facebook, you better be careful what you put on there. Woo. Say amen or ooh la la. <laughs> I know a pastor. He said, he said he didn't have Facebook. And he said, but you know, after he, somebody had told him some things that his congregation was putting on Facebook, not about him necessarily, but just about some situations and even to one another. So he said, I got a Facebook account just so I could go see what people were saying. Well, he didn't get up and mention names, but man, he got on to people for what they, he said, look, Look, don't put it out there if you don't want me to read it. Amen. Amen. Oh, and they were offended like, well, why'd you put it out there for? <laughs> Amen. Moving right along. This is, I'm getting off of a message. I've done meddling. Better get back to preaching. How many of you trusting in God? At all times, through all seasons. It doesn't matter if you're single, if you're married and children are everywhere, if your children are leaving and it's just you and your wife, or if one of your spouses has gone on to be with the Lord or some other circumstances has happened and you're all by yourself. Well, that's an all time, isn't it? So we're to trust in the Lord how often? All times. So, so make sure that just because things change or things are not like what you want or you may be in a season of life, you're wishing you were in another season. And I've been there. I'm there right now. But it doesn't matter as far as trusting in God because I'm to trust in Him at all times. Amen. So this is a good opportunity just to trust God. Yeah. Every opportunity is not an opportunity for defeat for a Christian. It's just an opportunity to see God work. That's a spirit of faith. Amen. Amen. Well, trusting in God is that way. So say it out loud. I'm trusting in Him at all times. And then, number uh, four, go to Psalm 56. You'd probably just have to back up a little bit. Here's another. So we've got three of them. This is number four. Psalm 56. We'll read three and four, and then we're going to... I think he repeats it again in the, later on in the psalm. But we'll get the, the flow here. Verse 3, Psalm 56, 3. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Wow. So you might want to write that down. Trust in him even when you're afraid. That ought to tell you that fear will come. Hmm? When you're afraid, that's just a time to trust in Him. Somebody said, faith goes in the door, fear goes out. Fear goes in, you let fear in, faith goes out. They're kind of like that way, they're opposites. So whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. How do I do that? In God, I will praise His Word. <laughs> do you know how to do that? Do you know how to take a promise and praise God over it? That's what we're to do. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what man could do to me. He repeats it again in verse 9. When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. Now I know, this I know, because God is for me. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? In God I will praise His word. In the Lord I will praise His word. In God I have put... You know, that's an action. I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Hallelujah. So, you know, fear comes. It comes to all of us. Fear comes through circumstances. Sometimes fears come because of experiences that we've had. Sometimes fear can be just a spirit. You know, I've had the devil try to whisper things in my mind over something that just happened that when you rationalize and start thinking about it, it was stupid. But it was just a fear. Huh? But, you know, fear is a tool of the enemy to drive you away from trust. Yeah. 
to drive you away from faith. So what you have to learn to do is know a little bit about what fear is and what it's trying to do so that when it comes, you don't move away from your trust. You just keep trusting in God. And what will happen is the fear will subside the fear will leave. But if you listen to the fear, it will quieten, quieten or it will uh, distract you. How many of you know that scripture, I mean uh, Isaiah 41, where it says, Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, I am your God. Well, you'll find that a lot of times that fear not, be not dismayed is connected. It's because the word dismay means to be in panic. It means to be distracted. You know, it's kind of like to, it's like, I, like it, I liken it like this, to lose your, your instinct. You know, I believe, uh, we're believers. Our spiritual instinct is to trust God. But when fear comes, it, you, you, if you're not careful, you'll throw that whole thing out the window. You know, just forget it. It'll distract you. It's like a squirrel that's crying across the road and all of a sudden it comes into fear because it can sense a car coming and it loses its instinct. All it has to do is keep walking. But it'll go... Beep, 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 beep. You ever seen a squirrel do that? Yeah. It's all confused. Well, you know, if you don't slow down, it's roadkill. Right? Well, you know, you have a, you know, the fear comes to try to distract you to cause you to forget something. I always tell this, especially since I'm in North Carolina, I remember this being in the mountains. My daddy tried to take me hunting when I was about five or six. That didn't work out too well because I made more noise, you know. And that's one thing you don't do when you're hunting. It's not a wise thing. Instead of going around the brush piles, I dove in them. So he gave up on it for a while, but about 9 or 10, you know, we tried it again. And I was a little bit more ready then. So we went into the woods, you know, and he sent me down. He said, you sit right here, and uh, you be quiet, and watch and listen, and you might see something. He said, I'm going right around that curve right there, not very far, and I'll be right back and come get you. You got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I was excited. Yeah. And so he took off, and I could watch him, you know, walk, and, and then I could see him, and then he went out of sight, and I could hear his footsteps for a little while, but then I couldn't hear anything. So what did he say to do? He said, be quiet, sit here and watch, and maybe you'll see something. So I started doing that. But you know, when you're all alone in the woods, it's funny how noises, how many noises you hear, especially if you're 9 or 10 years old. And, I, you know, the Holy Ghost brought this to me years ago <clears throat> as an illustration about fear. And so all of a sudden I heard something, and it sounded loud, but all it was was a leaf dropping or a limb that fell off a tree. And so I kind of, you know, dismissed that. A few minutes later I heard some other noise on my right, and it was a bird just rustling. In the, but it sounded really loud. Well, I started hearing all these wind and noise and leaves and birds and everything. Well, my imagination got the best of me, and I just knew there was a bear out there. I just knew that's what that was. My, I mean, I could see it. I could, I could, I, I, I could hear him getting closer. Well, finally, I had enough because I, you know, that fear was getting the best of me. So I finally said, "Daddy, Daddy!" Well, here he come. He was just around the corner, like he said, except he wasn't too happy. My dad could raise one eyebrow and lower the other one like this, and when he looked at you, man, you know, just, he wasn't happy. So I could see that look on his face. But years ago, as I was meditating on fear, the Lord spoke to me about that, reminded me about that. You know, I just like the Holy Ghost. Some, you know, he's kind of funny sometimes, because that was a childhood fear. But it, but it was a fear. And he asked me a question: What did that fear do? It made me forget where my father was and what he said. Fear is designed to make you forget that God said, I am with you. Yeah. How often? Always. So that's why we trust in him at all times, because he's with me always. He never leaves, never forsakes. And I love the Amplified, never, never, never. Because the Amplified there in, in Hebrews chapter five, 13, verse 5, it's a, it, it was to mean to repeat it often. I will never, I will never, I will never leave you, forsake you, abandon you, let go of you. Woo! So why can't we trust in God at all times? Because we praise His Word. You see, you got to turn fears table. you got to turn it around. When it comes, turn it around. At all times, trust in God. Even when you're afraid, trust in God. And when you do that, that fear will leave.
And God's promises. As you begin to praise, So, as you begin to walk in life down here, and circumstances may come, and yes, there shall arise fear. And it shall try to speak to your mind. And as you begin to listen to that, if you do, then the things of God will go stranger and stranger and further away, till even the things that you know will seem so far away and God will seem so small. But as you turn that around and begin to trust in the Lord and begin to rejoice and begin to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, then the reverse shall take place. That which God is, that which he says, and that which he has promised becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so you're actually magnifying the Lord and you're seeing him for what he really is. And truly faith will come, the answer will come, and truly all things will be well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Magnify the Lord with me. How I many know he's big all the time? But you got to magnify him. How do you do that? Praising his word. Praising his word. When fear comes, refuse to fear and keep trusting. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what was that? Number four? You can write down Psalm 112. That's just another reference for that, but we won't take time. Uh, uh, verse, uh, Psalm 37. Let's look at something else here. Number five. Oh my. Let's hurry up here. Psalm 37. Now this has many components. We will just kind of put one little phrase on it and then you can, as you're taking notes, you can write all this in here. But I believe there's a word here for the church right here. Are you ready? So I want you to be listening. Psalm 37, verse 3. We're going to read three or several passages here. Trust in the Lord and do good. So if you're taking notes just for a lack, you know, to make it simple, number five, trust in the Lord and do good. But he goes on to tell you what to do. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. I'll come back to that in a minute. I believe I have something to tell you. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. And he'll bring forth your righteousness as the light, your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. That's a good word. So there are many things it told us to do. To do good, to trust, to delight, to commit, amen, to rest, to not fret. I like that. Don't fret, it, it tends to harm. In other words, worry. How I many you know worry, it will lead to bad things. It never, you know, I, when I first came to, uh, got filled with the Holy Ghost, I got filled with the Holy Ghost at Chapel Hill. I was a junior in North Carolina. And God called me to preach, so I quit that. And I uh, was waiting for a year, you know, the next year to come, so I'd get into a Bible school. So I lived in High Point for a while. And, uh, <clears throat> and there was a, a, a charismatic group that met, and I would go meet with them. Lived with a the family there for a while. And, and I heard uh, two preachers that came through. They'd come through here during that time. They were the, the Tom family, T-H-O-M. I don't know if you ever heard of the Toms. Robert was the dad, Drummond. Uh, was the son. And Drummond was, was more of a teacher. Robert, the dad, was more prophetic. And so I used to love to hear uh, Robert. And, you know, he had that South African accent. And he would always, I can still hear him say it. I still hear them say this in his South African accent. Uh, he said, have you ever seen a bud with a worried look? Worried. He'd say, worried look. Have you ever seen a bird with a worried look? No. No, you go, they did some study one time on how much money it would take to feed the birds in the state of Ohio for one month. And at that time, the richest man in America, uh, Rockefellers, would go bankrupt. <laughs> so he said, have you ever seen a bird with a wiry look? He said, if you worry, you die. If you don't worry, you still die. So why worry? 
<laughs> well, you know, he's got a point, doesn't he? Worry, fret, only tends to evil. But here's what I wanted to tell you. This is a word I believe I have for the church. That first part says, trust in the Lord and do good. Now, all those things that I told you are good. Delighting, committing, resting, right? Not fretting. Cease from anger. I mean, those are things that we can practice. And we should be. If we're going to be doing the word, we practice that. But here's what he said to do. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. I believe that's a word this morning for, for this church, for you. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. You know, we go through changes, but you know, sometimes that's what you do. You just stay put and feed on his faithfulness. And you know how many of you know God's been faithful? Yes, yes. Has he ever blessed you before? Yes. Has he ever met you before? Yes. Has he heard your prayer before? Yes. Has he saved your family? Yes. Has he healed your body? Has he turned things around? Well, feed on that faithfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And I'll tell you, it'll, it'll just do something on the inside of you. Then you're in a position you are trusting God. If changes need to happen or something needs to come, it will come. But you've got to keep trust. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I believe that was a word for, for, uh, from the Lord for, for each and every one of us. I receive it. How about you? I'm having to do that in my own position right now. There's something where, you know, you can be in transition and not know what to do. But here's something I know to do. Just stay put and trust in God. Be faithful. He's faithful. You be faithful. <laughs> and feed on His faithfulness. Whew. My goodness. You know, that's a, way, that's a good way to pray. Just start writing down the things that the Lord has done, the Word He's shown you before, and start remembering that in prayer. You know, that's part of prayer. David said, I will remember your works of old. I will meditate upon your works, and I will muse upon them. I'll stretch forth my hands unto you. I'll seek you as in a dry and thirsty land. Hallelujah. Ooh, it'll, something will start happening on the inside. So trust in the Lord and do good. We'll just leave it at that. Then finally, Psalm 91. We're going to look at two references, and these are the last ones, and then we'll just change gears for a minute. Hallelujah. Psalm 91. Everybody's familiar with Psalm 91. First sermon I ever preached was Psalm 91. I told everything I knew in five minutes. Psalm 91, Let's, we won't read the whole psalm. Verse 2, Surely he shall, verse, oh, excuse me, I will say, everybody say, I will say. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. So if number 6 is, trust God and say it. Trust God and say it. I'm sure over the years you've heard many messages about the power of words. Well, when it comes to trust in God, David said, I will, he said, I will say. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, He is my God, and in Him I put my trust. You say it. Amen. Now, just for a confirmation about that, I like this one. Look real carefully at Psalm 31. Just kind of add this to, to that under that category of trusting in God with your words. Trust in God and say it. Psalm 31. Praise God. We could read a lot of Psalm 31, but we won't read the whole thing. It's, I've got a lot of trust in there. But let's just look at verse 14. But as for me... I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Oh, I like that one. I like that one. As for me, you know, in other words, I can trust God for me, but I can't necessarily trust God for you. Yeah, that's right. As for me, see, you have to make a decision and commitment in your own life who you're going to trust. David said, as for me, I trust in you, Lord. I will say... You're my God. My times are in your hand. Man, he just kind of lived a carefree life, didn't he? I believe that's the way God wants us to live. Like this. Trusting in God and not being afraid. Trusting in God and rejoicing. Trusting in God with their heart and at all times. But also trusting in God with your words. Your words are very important. What you say will either bind you or set you free. So you need to make sure that you are saying, I'm trusting in you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there's six things. We'll go over them real quickly again. Number one was what? 
With your heart, number two? Rejoice. Rejoice. Trusting people rejoice, don't they? Yeah. How many trusting people we got in here? Can I have a hallelujah? Hallelujah. And number three, oh, sorry, that was number three. Number three? Trusting Him at all times. Trusting Him at all times, right? Number four? Even when you're afraid? Number five? Trust, Trust in the Lord and do good. Now, there are other things there you do. Act on the Word. Act. You know, there are many things. Just do what the Bible says. If it says believe, believe. If it says love, love. If it says rejoice, rejoice. If it says trust, trust. Just practice it. Be a doer. And then finally, number six. Trust God and say it. Trust in God and say it. Let's lift our hands and praise God just for a few minutes here. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Say this out loud with me. Lord, we trust you. I'm trusting you with my heart. And leaning not to my own understanding. But I acknowledge you right now. That you're my God. You're my Father God. Jesus, you're Lord. You're my great shepherd. Holy Ghost, you're the greater one. I acknowledge you, I trust you, and you direct my paths. You answer my prayer. You help me. You're a very present help, even in times of trouble. I will rejoice and trust in you. I'll rejoice at all times, but I'm rejoicing in you, Lord. Not my own strength, not because of the circumstances, but because I'm trusting in you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that I'll trust you at all times, all seasons, all days of the week, whenever I think about it. I have a trusting attitude. And I trust you even when I'm afraid. I bind fear. I resist fear. I don't give in to fear. For you are always with me. And so I will trust you. I will praise your word. I will magnify you. And Lord, I will also trust in you and do good. And Lord, I receive that word. That I'll trust you and do good. Dwell in the land. And feed on your faithfulness. Hallelujah. You are the faithful God. Why don't you raise your hands and praise God that He's faithful to you. He's faithful right now. He's faithful to His people. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And finally say, I trust you with my words, Lord. I have what I say. And I say, you are my God. You're my refuge, my fortress. And I trust in you. Hallelujah. Give him one more shout. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Woo! Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now just for a few minutes, get that dollar bill out or whatever it is. You know, it says, in God we trust. I think we ought to pray for America right now. May that never be removed from our currency. We are one nation under God, indivisible. Amen. God's got a plan for this nation. You know, everybody talks about the physical cliff. If God hadn't been blessing America, we would have jumped off the cliff a long time ago. More than once. Amen. Father, we just pray for America right now. Lord, we're Christians, and we're in this land, and you've brought us here, and we thank you for it. And your word tells us to pray for those that are in authority. Your word, and Lord, we look beyond the natural. We look to you. That's why we're praying. <laughs> if we were looking to people, we wouldn't pray at all. But we're looking to you. And Lord, our currency says, in God we trust. So Lord, we invoke your name upon the economy of our nation. We ask for divine intervention. You've turned it around before. You've healed our nation before. 
You've changed the economy before. Lord, I remember in the 70s, interest rates were 14, 15%, but you turned it around. God, we ask in Jesus' name for divine intervention. Lord, our eyes are upon you, and we pray for peace. We pray for righteousness. We pray for revival in America, Lord God. That is our prayer, and we will not quit praying, Lord. Our eyes are upon you. We may know not what to do, but our eyes are upon you, and we will trust in you. Hallelujah. And you'll always meet our needs. Praise God. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody agreed, said? Amen. Lift your hands and praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Oh, praise God. Now, Father, I pray right now for each and every one under the sound of my voice that they may be in, in, in severe financial pressure for whatever reason. But because they are a child of God, because they've heard the word, because they're acting upon the word right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon them and destroy that yoke. I bind fear. I bind pressure. I bind lies of the devil. And I command you to desist in your maneuvers against their minds. And you are our God. And you are on the throne. And you never change. And you are our shepherd. And we shall not want. And I thank you, Lord, for miracles. I thank you for favor in Jesus' name. Woo! Thank you, Lord, when they go forth from this place, when they get up from their prayer, if they're watching this or if they hear this on a CD or whatever, Lord, I thank you that they rise up in the favor of God. Stamped on their forehead. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then when they go out tomorrow or they're, they're into their regular circumstances, they go with favor. And you cause things to turn around. You give them favor with the world. You give them favor with people. You give them favor with their bosses, with jobs, with businesses. Cause things to come to them. Angels go. Angels go and cause things to change on the behalf of the saints of God. In Jesus' name. Woo! Now, if you believe that, you receive that. Raise your hands and say, praise God. I receive it. He's turning things around. He's the God that turns things around. Hallelujah. He's turning them around right now. There's, there's some people here you're trying to sell things I don't know it seemed like it might be a car I don't know but there's something you're trying to sell I'm telling you right now angels go right now and cause you people to come across your path that need what you have and what you're selling and you get what you're asking for and it'll be blessed they'll be blessed and you'll be blessed in Jesus name we bind the devil over that situation and Lord we thank you we thank you for success. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For divine favor. We thank you our steps are ordered by you and you delight in our way. Hallelujah. If that you, just, just raise your hands and say, I receive that. Call that thing sold. <laughs> say it as, you know, just say it when you think about it. Angels are helping me. They're going out assisting. I, they, they hearken to the word of God. We agree that we have help of God and that thing sell. We have favor. So angels are out working right now. Amen. And they're bringing people right across your path. <laughs> Woo! I don't think I've ever had a word like that before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, just receive it. Just receive it. Let's raise our hands one more time see if the Lord's through here. Praise God. Just keep rejoicing for a few minutes here. You know, God's at work. When he's manifesting himself like that, <coughs> sometimes he manifests through gifts, but other times he's just moving by his Holy Spirit. You know, he can reveal something to you sitting in your seat. <laughs> just sitting there. He can have an answer. You can have an answer sitting there. Woo! You can be refreshed and revived and delivered and strengthened. Hallelujah. And blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just sitting there. Just sitting there. <laughs> you know, on the day of Pentecost, they were all seated in one accord in one place. <laughs> Woo, you can get filled seated. <laughs> you can get filled sitting down. <laughs> Some of you need a fresh filling right now. Whoa. 
Hallelujah. Just begin to rejoice in Him. <laughs> oh, life is not meant to go through not drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> not filled. Not filled. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Just receive. Receive a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost. Glory. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. You know, our God's real. His Word's real. I, I wouldn't want, I, I, I can't imagine living life any other way than trusting God. Than knowing the Lord's my shepherd. Through the ups and the downs, through the downs and the outs, He never changes. Aren't you glad? Well, raise your hand one more time and thank God for His Word. Amen, 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 amen. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Did you get something? Are you encouraged this morning? Hallelujah. Are you the head, not the tail, above and not beneath? <laughs> Is the enemy fleeing from you seven ways? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, God bless you.